to SMU for hosting uh, this session. And uh, I suppose, given the location, given that it is not our own home, it, there are some people may uh, drift in in the course of the presentation, but I think there are plenty of seats. There are plenty of seats. Anyway. And, uh, Dr. Suzanne Dahlgren is an anthropologist who is interested in moral questions, law, and politics. She studies anthropology at the University of Edinburgh, the London School of Economics, and the University of Helsinki, where she took her PhD in 2004. She has been a fellow at the Helsinki Collegium for Advanced Studies and at the National Academy of Finland. Her PhD project was published as Contesting Realities, the Public Sphere and Morality in Southern Yemen, uh, published by Syracuse University Press in 2010. Her recent work has involved theorizing the revolutions of the Arab Spring as part of a project on geographies of gender in the Arab revolutions, convened by Francis Hasso and Zakir Salimeh. A recent photo essay was published in muftah.org on rebels without shoes, a village a visit to South Yemen Revolution Square. Suzanne joined the joint MEI in August to write up a project entitled Post-Socialism in the Arabian Peninsula, the Politics of Islam and Modernization in South Yemen.
um, has been as the top division with Russian Division 5 to play such a bad. But let's go back to, to Yemen and um, this is Sena, the capital of, of uh, today's Yemen, and talk about a little bit about the, the state today, uh, which is called the Republic of Yemen. It was formed in 1990 by putting together two countries with very different parts. So there was North Yemen, uh, Yemen Arab Republic, and South Yemen, uh, People's Democratic Republic of Yemen. Um, as I said, uh, these two countries have very different uh, historical uh, background and, and very different growth to modernity. Uh, what we have in, in the north is um, used to be uh, before uh, in the, uh, before the <coughs> uh, Republic uh, uh, called the Mutawakili Kingdom of Yemen. And this was established in 1918 when uh, Ottoman control of, of, of that part of Arabia collapsed uh, to the uh, collapse of uh, Ottoman uh, reign. Uh, uh, the the Zaydi Imamate that uh, was established uh, was a very closed country. Before that, uh, uh, this part of Yemen had been uh, involved in the uh, in trade of um, coffee. You know the, the name of Mosfa comes actually from Yemen. It's, it's the name of the city in the northern part of Yemen. But that trade already had eclipsed in uh, uh, 1800. And uh, since then, uh, the Imam, this is uh, Imam Yahya, uh, kept the country very close, and, and there was hardly any, any uh, communication with outside world. In uh, 1962, there was a revolution against the Imamate and, and uh, uh, a civil war followed uh, almost the uh, entire 1960s. Uh, and those who were fighting were uh, forces who were uh, supporting uh, the Imamate, uh, the king basically, <coughs> and, and Republican forces. And, uh, um, the Republicans were uh, supported by Egyptians, but um, um, uh, royalists uh, by Saudi Arabia and as it turned out later on uh, also by the uh, by Britain. So um, after the revolution the, the country started to open up to the uh, outside world uh, but uh, the uh, regime could never uh, actually establish a control in, in the whole territory of, of that, uh, that country. So who were, who were the forces who, who kept um, control in, in the uh, vast areas in the countryside, in particular in the highlands? Uh, there were the tribes. Uh, the tribal system is, is very uh, long time, well established uh, system with its own law. And many of the tribes have their own uh, basically armies, you can say, and, and they have their own administration and everything. Um, and, and this uh, uh, sort of uh, substituted uh, the absence of uh, state rule in those areas. Uh, the economy of, uh, of the Yemen Arab Republic was a uh, mixed economy, and, and uh, in, in that sense, it uh, was very different from the South. Uh, in the South, uh, before uh, independence, uh, uh, there was a uh, British colonial rule, uh, East India Company, took uh, Aden. 1939, and uh, is that uh, later on it became the Crown Colony. That, that means it, it was directly ruled from London. Uh, before that, it was uh, um, about a century uh, ruled from, from Bombay as part of uh, British India. And uh, uh, thus, there was a big uh, presence of uh, Indians in, in, in the administration. Uh, the countryside basically in, in the south were uh, different uh, uh, types of emirates, sultanates, uh, and, and they uh, had the treaties with, with the British on, on, on basically on, on, on uh, getting the help of British army to uh, 
neither was that administration. The kind of solution to this problem came in 1994 when uh, there finally came a sort of a confrontation between the, the army and um, the, the civil war. And, and this uh, resulted in the South in what people uh, call it uh, as uh, occupation, North, Northern occupation of the South. So basically it became that this man had full control of the country, Ali Abdul Asal. And uh, uh, as you know that he is one of the dictators that were toppled in the 2011 uh, revolutions. Of, uh, his uh, story is not that uh, somber as, as the other dictators, and I will come back to that um, soon. So, uh, like in, in uh, many other Arab countries, in 2011, early on in January, uh, a huge revolution started in, in uh, major cities throughout Yemen, uh, demanding uh, the uh, ousting of, uh, of President uh, Ali Abu Asal, end of corruption, uh, and uh, that the state funds national resources should be used uh, for development instead of uh, uh, elite corruption. Uh, this uh, revolution uh, managed uh, quite uh, soon uh, to split the elite of, uh, of Sana and, and uh, actually uh, part of uh, uh, Saleh's uh, former sort of closest allies joined the revolution. And uh, at the end of the, the spring, uh, uh, actually, uh, these different elite groups and, and their armies behind them started to fight each other in, in Sana'a. And, and this was sort of the end of the revolution in, in many aspects. In, finally, in, in November 2011, uh, Saleh was made to step down and, and give over to his uh, deputy. But uh, uh, even though his uh, semi illiterate, uh, not at all educated person, is, is, is the most cunning of, of, of all politicians in, in, in the Middle East, that you can say, he managed to uh, negotiate actually a golden handshake for him when, when he stepped down. There was no question that he would be put to trial on uh, slaughtering uh, uh, demonstrators in the streets of, uh, of Yemen. No question of uh, him returning the, the funds that he had embezzled from the state treasury. Instead, uh, he was uh, allowed to stay in Yemen. Uh, actually, he said uh, he was allowed to stay in uh, as the uh, leader of the ruling party, which he is still today, and, and he has all these properties that uh, he, he collected during the 30 years of his rule. Uh, this uh, stripping down of uh, Saleh uh, uh, instigated a, a process which is called a transitional process in Yemen. <coughs> And, and this was uh, uh, negotiated under the auspices of uh, uh, Gulf Cooperation Council and uh, uh, the leading Western powers. And, and part of this uh, uh, transition was uh, to have a, a, a dialogue conference. This conference took final place in 2013, from March to uh, next January, nine months. Uh, and it was held in, in, in the five-star luxurious uh, Roman big hotel in Sana'a with uh, 20, 28 million dollars budget. So uh, this uh, uh, five-star dialogue, uh, as you can call it, um, came up uh, with the solution sort of a Yemen crisis, which was uh, uh, a, a suggestion uh, to, uh, divide the country into six feder federal states. And, and it was uh, highly publicized at that time that uh, this is the Yemeni model of a peaceful transition of power which other countries should follow. However, um, as uh, it has turned out, 
the CNN model wasn't uh, actually leading anywhere. Uh, this is the uh, federation plan, and uh, uh, so it, it basically uh, divides the country into six uh, different size uh, states. Uh, the southern part has two, two states, and, and then the north has sort of four states. The north is much more populous than, than the south. Uh, Basically, when you look at this map and com uh, compare it to this map, which uh, indicates the areas where uh, which are outside the regime control, you, you can see that uh, there is a sort of parallel in, 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 in respect that uh, uh, what we have here is uh, uh, this is the full uh, descent which I'm going to just soon. Uh, uh, the red stripes uh, indicate the area where uh, Al-Qaeda moves around. It, it doesn't control this area, but uh, it's moving around in this uh, area. And this is the area which is uh, the former south, which is now claiming independence. So uh, my idea is that uh, this uh, federal plan was drawn in, in order to split the uh, Al-Qaeda area into at least three different uh, federal states as if that would be any kind of solution to Al-Qaeda. Uh, I really doubt that. So, uh, the Houthis. Uh, Houthis uh, uh, is, a, is a scientific group which actually has uh, now taken over capital Sana'a. We had the, uh, had the, read the news in, in September, uh, this uh, 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 multi uh, took over um, Sana'a and uh, it's basically dictating politics now in, in, in all Yemen. Uh, who are these Houthis? These are uh, Saidis, that's the, the, the typical of the Yemeni Shia group. Imam Saidis uh, uh, Shia, uh, and uh, this movement was established by this man uh, Hussein Baidhuddin, uh, who, who started to claim that the, uh, the Saidis uh, uh, interests uh, uh, in the situation that uh, uh, the province where they live. Uh, had been sort of uh, infiltrated by Salafi institutes. So uh, there was a Salafi uh, dissemination of anti society propaganda, and uh, um, you can say that in the early 2000s, this propaganda intensified. And also, uh, President Saleh started to uh, propagate against the Houthis. Uh, if you look at the similar events at, at that time, uh, in early 2000, uh, it became clear that uh, uh, Saleh was trying to uh, introduce his own son, Ahmed, as, as his uh, successor, and uh, uh, basically they started the uh, power struggle in, in, in Sana'a. Uh, in 2000, uh, uh, this uh, propaganda against the Houthis was intensified and in the beginning uh, it was interesting that uh, Saleh was indicating that this, uh, this is the slogans of the Houthis. Uh, it says that uh, God is great, uh, uh, death to Americans, death to Israel, uh, and, uh, and the Jews, and, uh, and uh, victory to, to Islam. So uh, basically, uh, Saleh was saying that uh, the Houthis have to be crushed because they are anti-American and anti-Israel. So, okay, if you take that kind of position, uh, in, in Yemen most people are anti-American politics and anti-Israel politics, for sure. So uh, it, it's not an argument. Then he changed the argument. He, he started to propagate against the Houthis that they are actually uh, 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 
by, by Iran, uh, and that this is an indication of Iranian uh, um, in, invasion of, of, um, of um, Yemen, and that's why uh, they have to be crushed. Even this didn't sort of, um, it, uh, you can say that this argument uh, had some sort of resonance among the population, and in fact, when you uh, connected this argument towards the uh, general anti-Shia uh, sentiments that started to spread uh, due to uh, more war on Iraq, uh, there was a sort of uh, fruitful platform to, to rally against the group. Uh, thus, um, uh, the, the regime actually killed the leader in 2004, which uh, um, uh, started uh, a war in between Houthis and, and, and the army. This war uh, was um, uh, wasted in, in, in six rounds, and, and then finally in 2010 there was a, a ceasefire. And, and since then, uh, the Houthis have more or less used the political situation in, in, in the country to uh, gain more popularity in, in the northern part of, of the country. They were, of course, uh, involved in, in the news revolution too. So basically, uh, what happened is, is that uh, uh, it is suspected that Saleh actually wanted to get rid of uh, the uh, uh, rival to his son, uh, General Ali Muxen, and he sent Ali, Ali Muxen to, to fight the Houthis, knowing that uh, it, it is a difficult fight. And, and obviously, he was right. So, um, in August uh, this year, the Houthis uh, marched in Aden and uh, into Sanaa, and, and they took over uh, uh, public squares uh, and government buildings there. In the beginning, they were demonstrating against the price, but uh, uh, price hikes, which the government had um, introduced, and then obviously they gained popular support by um, making these kind of demands. Finally, it became clear that in, uh, in September 21, they had actually taken over in Sanaa. Um, currently, the situation with the Houthis is that uh, these are basically the areas in, in, uh, in Yemen which are um, to more or less under Houthi control. Um, how can this kind of thing happen? Well, it is uh, speculated that the man actually behind the Houthis is uh, President Ali Abdullah Saleh, who was using them and, and in order to uh, uh, progress his own political aims to, to come to power again. And uh, I would say that it's, it's not impossible. However, the Houthis actually have done very much uh, good things in meanwhile. Um, they have got rid of um, some of the uh, troublemakers in the, or the members of the elite. This is uh, Hamid and this is uh, Sadiq uh, al uh, from the biggest uh, tribal confederation. Uh, they, they form a sort of clique. Uh, then this is General Ali Muxen. And, and uh, this is Saleh and, and his nephews and, and sons, his uh, former deputy. Uh, so basically, these figures are out from uh, from Sana and out, out from power currently. And, and many people are actually uh, happy with that because uh, earlier any kind of um, uh, health mediation or, or anything like that. <coughs> couldn't actually um, touch uh, the core issue that is the problem in Sana, uh, which is uh, the power struggle. Then um, let's go to the south and, and the southern descent. Um, this um, descent um, <coughs> um, currently you can say that about 90% of people support independence of South Yemen. 
pre-establishment independence. In, in what form? That's uh, uh, there, there are different views about that, but um, uh, it, it's really difficult to find anybody in uh, in the South today who would support being together with uh, with uh, Sana anymore. This uh, uprising started in 2007, so it's uh, uh, much older than uh, the Arab Spring. And um, there, there was throughout the 90s, early, early 2000, um, great um, dissatisfaction to the way um, Sana ruled the South. In 2007, uh, they came. Um, uh, the movement was formed uh, by expelled uh, southern uh, army officers, uh, which is called uh, the Southern Movement, uh, Iraq in, in Arabic. And, and this movement has ever since gained popularity in, in the South. Uh, they have organized these uh, um, marches. Um, <coughs> This is from one of the millionaire march, the million hand march. They are regularly held in, in, in Aden. And also they have introduced uh, last year a uh, civil disobedience stage when a lot of is inscribed. So uh, what are the main grievances of the southerners? This is a uh, banner that somebody uh, Posted in the Facebook. Uh, Facebook is one of the platforms where uh, the movement <coughs> is uh, uh, distributing uh, <coughs> its uh, propaganda. And, and uh, basically, the, the idea is that uh, this is Sana before in, uh, unity, unity. And this is Sana after unity. So the idea is to point out that uh, Sana modernized suddenly during this 20 years of unity, while uh, Aden used to be modern and developed sort of, uh, while after unity it collapsed, everything collapsed, and it, it's uh, sort of uh, the misery that people live now. Uh, if we take a look at uh, some of the uh, maps which uh, indicate uh, means of uh, living and, and national resources. This is a map of, uh, of basically oil findings and uh, uh, natural gas findings. But you can see that most of them are in, in the south. It's about 80% of, uh, of the oil is, is in the south. Um, So this is one of the, the, the major sort of problems that, that um, uh, even though the uh, resources are there in the south, uh, they are not used to develop the, the south. Instead, uh, uh, the rules in, in the capital are, are looting them uh, uh, and putting uh, in their pockets these uh, uh, resources and, and uh, leaving uh, south without any kind of development projects. The other grievance, a big one uh, among the southerners, is that uh, following the 1994 war, a uh, big sort of uh, um, what is called privatization campaign started in the south. But um, um, instead of privatizing it, 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 it's actually it was a um, round of, uh, of looting the lands in the south and, and distributing them to members of uh, of any. Uh, one of the, the major areas that is important, strategically uh, important, is, is down here near the Kabul uh, Manda, or the opening to the Red Sea. So uh, uh, this is an uninhabited area, but it's uh, strategically important because uh, it's the, uh, the closest area, built area, to the strait is here, and, and uh, uh, whoever has this area in, in their hands sort of uh, controls also uh, the uh, 
movement in, in, in the strait. This area was uh, given to Ali Muslim. So the, he, now that he had to leave Sana, uh, it's uh, not clear what has happened to the area here. Another grievance uh, that the Southerners are uh, making is that uh, North Yemen uh, has been less educated uh, than, than the South. And uh, uh, this is a, again a clip posted in the Facebook which uh, implicates that uh, in, in the North uh, people or the, the teacher is, is, is a tribal man who's having his uh, Gambia or a knife while in the classroom chewing cut while teaching sort of a signs of uh, ignorance uh, that the uh, southerners uh, feel that they don't want to have this kind of education. This is of course a uh, I mean, uh, highly uh, stereotypical uh, image of, of northerners. Uh, the revolution in the South uh, is not only the Southern movement uh, as it has been uh, described in, in, in the international media. I'm suggesting that what is important currently in the uh, revolution is that it's a popular revolution in the sense that it's uh, people's uh, um, individual initiatives that, that matter more than what actually the, the leaders of, uh, of uh, Iraq Designing. So I'm going to show you um, uh, pictures from some of these uh, uh, forms of disobedience or um, uh, forms of rebel, rebellion that I found last year when I visited the area. Uh, this one, uh, there are several uh, uh, platforms for intellectuals together. This one is, uh, is for the Nobilis. Uh, uh, Aden al Watani, um, sort of a national uh, council of, of Aden, which is part of the, uh, Iraq. And, and uh, their mission is sort of um, to uh, take uh, in charge uh, of the failing administration in, in Aden. That means taking care of, of, of uh, things that uh, the um, state and the municipal authority should take care of but which uh, they are incapable of doing. This includes that there are uh, long power cuts every day. There's no running water. Um, it, uh, this uh, waste uh, collection is, is, uh, has collapsed. Uh, basically, uh, everything has collapsed. Uh, only in, uh, this uh, September, when the food is to go over in Sana, uh, the governor of Aden, who was nominated from Sana'a, fled because he realized that uh, his times, days are, are short. Uh, another elite uh, or rather the intellectual gathering is uh, Mother Club, which is a, a club uh, that um, gathers in, in a small uh, room, basically, in, in the mainland. Aiden. Um, these are intellectuals. Anybody can come there. Um, this part is, is only for men or only men come there. Uh, and uh, they organize this kind of uh, afternoon gatherings where somebody makes a uh, lecture and then the others uh, then uh, participate in, in discussion. Uh, when, when I took this photo of the I was asked to uh, um, give a presentation about my studies in, in, in Yemen. This is the graduation ceremony of uh, Faculty of Education, uh, Faculty of Economics in Aden uh, University. It's the, for the first time the students organize themselves, and you can see that uh, uh, because the, the road has the flag of, of uh, Yemen. Uh, the, the students had uh, substituted with, with, with the southern flag. Uh, there was a very emotional moment in, in the ceremony when uh, they showed a 
and presentation about uh, uh, their participation in, in the revolution and about their comrades who have been killed and, and, uh, and participating in the demonstrations. This is from uh, the Faculty of Arts, uh, uh, the spontaneous demonstration to uh, get uh, uh, freedom for political prisoners. And, and this is the um, magistrate's court in Aden, where uh, the uh, barristers and judges uh, gathered uh, one morning planning uh, uh, their strike because uh, in the courtroom, uh, in the courthouse, uh, there were ball cuts, and, and you, you cannot sort of uh, sit in this kind of uh, room when there is no air condition. And, uh, the air is, is simply so humid that it, it's impossible to work in, in that kind of condition. Also, they didn't receive their salaries, so, so there was a um, uh, sort of um, big issues to discuss. Then, uh, if you go to Hadamard, uh, what's happening in Hadamard, this is the town of Hotel. And uh, there, in uh, 2012, um, some intellectuals established what is called uh, Intellectuals for a New South. And I wanted to point out this because um, one of the uh, founding members is uh, uh, this lady here, who is um, uh, Huda Alatas. Uh, she's a young generation uh, uh, writer short stories, uh, one of the most respected uh, authors of Yemen currently, and uh, she's, she's one of the leading forces in, in both Hadamard and in Aden on, on, uh, <coughs> for independence and, and for uh, restoring the, the rights of the Hadamard. Then uh, the ma major issue in Hadamard currently is, is actually what the uh, tribes are doing, and uh, this is uh, the official uh, website of, um, of the Hagami uh, Tribes Confederation, Confederation uh, uh, This is a uh, photo of one of the uh, tribal meetings. These are the, the tribal chefs who, who gather uh, this kind of, uh, have this kind of gatherings where uh, they uh, discuss and, and make decisions about their the, uh, joint actions. Background to this um, tribal um, concern is that in uh, December last year, uh, one of the tribal chefs was uh, killed in, in a army workshop, and uh, the tribes immediately gathered. They demanded that uh, the regime uh, finds out um, who actually made the killing and, and uh, uh, gives the culprits uh, to the tribes. Um, the, the regime was given an ultimatum that they, that if they don't uh, do anything, they, um, uh, the tribes will stop oil production in, in the province. And obviously, uh, that, uh, Outfits were not handed over to the tribes, and, and the tribes did uh, stop oil production. <coughs> uh, the tribes have also been in contact with the foreign oil companies and, and uh, uh, suggested to them that they should actually get uh, the uh, security uh, provided by the tribes and not by uh, the corrupted. Uh, uh, army generals who um, actually have been uh, involved in, in very expensive uh, uh, security deals with, with the oil companies. Some several, uh, uh, I saw some about 38 million dollars deals that uh, these generals have made with the oil companies in order to provide protection to them and, and their partners. Another thing that uh, um, troubles in in Baku in, in Hatta Mountains is the presence of Al Qaeda there. 
And it is rumored actually that uh, my Al-Qaeda is, is uh, so widespread and so mobile in, in, in Yemen is that uh, there is uh, in the highest level of Yemeni security and, and uh, armed forces there is uh, collaboration with, uh, with Al-Qaeda. This is of course a fact that needs to be still proven. Uh, so the Turks are to um, uh, some extent believing that the protest movement in, in Hadamaut, um, they are, they of course, they have also in Hadamaut a um, uh, uh, kind of um, contest of power between two different um, personalities. Recently, one of the uh, historical political parties emerged, that's the Radita Radnaul Ali Janoum, or uh, the uh, the association of uh, the um, sons of the, of the South, our uh, GP uh, family, one of the respected uh, Adam families, uh, he has now uh, become politically active again. Then there's the question of Saudi Arabia who wants to uh, uh, propagate for. Uh, Hadamaut independence without the South in order to be able uh, to get a route to the Indian Ocean. So the, the, all kind of, uh, sort of uh, speculations and uh, plans are going on there. And obviously uh, the uh, province which is uh, released from uh, Hadamaut al -Mahra, they are very much afraid of Adamant uh, uh, taking over the area of the uh, Mahara. These are some of the images from the rallies uh, there. And then I'm going to shortly uh, take you to the revolution squares in, in, in Aden. So uh, here we are in, in, in the city of Aden. Uh, basically, the town has been taken over by independent movement. You can see the, the flag posted in, in many places. This is a flag home by itself. And uh, this is one of the main streets in Aden where the revolution has uh, removed uh, the symbols of, of the government, Sana government, and put instead of uh, pictures of their own markers. <coughs> people who have been killed in the demonstrations. They have also taken over the commercial billboards and, and, and put the, the pictures of, the, of their uh, markers. This young man, uh, Sana, uh, he was killed in a, in a Turn fight in, in this uh, area, and he was trying to protect the uh, uh, young girl who was actually uh, caught in the middle of the, uh, this uh, shooting, shootout. Some of the shopkeepers are also uh, uh, influenced by the revolution, um, the imaginary, and uh, basically a money changing place. Uh, then I, I mentioned this um, uh, civil disobedience days. And, and this is a banner which uh, tells about uh, the civil disobedience days. Last year they were organized uh, twice a week on every uh, Saturday and, and Wednesday from uh, 6 o'clock in the morning to, uh, to noon. And during those hours, uh, uh, all the shops kept closed, uh, 
schools were closed, most of the government offices were destroyed, and uh, people stayed in, in homes, the roads were blocked. And there's an exception, and it is mentioned here, that the health units and the front desert were not <coughs> involved in, in strife. This is a uh, sign in one of the government um, offices telling that it's, it's closed due to the civil disobedience there. This photo is from a mass funeral uh, which was organized in, in, the, uh, in the main street uh, because of three certain pilots uh, killed uh, the same week and then this was a uh, you know, <coughs> I was in, in the balcony here together with these guys photographed. This is the funeral uh, procession. Uh, it became a huge uh, rally in, in Hayden. And even though women don't normally participate in funerals, uh, uh, they were women who organized the, the, the event. Then um, this is uh, the, the biggest of these revolution squares in, in, in the uh, continent area that the British built in the 1950s called Hornoxel. And, and uh, this is one of the cars full of uh, people who, who come from the countryside to attend the Monday and March. These guys came from the uh, far east, uh, in Almahra. These are Aiden young youngsters with hip hop cars. So this was a huge gathering. Um, there were um, hundreds of thousands of people, I would say. But I was standing in the in the podium and if you look at the picture, you, you might wonder where are the women. Um, the women are actually here. They were given the only seats. So the, so the women were given the, the seats in the podium. And, and, and they, this uh, turned out to be the rule in, in all gatherings that I observed that the women were always given them the best seats. Um, this is the medical team that uh, worked for the uh, mass rally. Um, by this uh, female uh, medical doctor. And uh, then uh, we move on to, uh, to the old part of Aden uh, theater uh, where uh, they have one of these permanent uh, revolution squares that is permanent in the sense that it's, it's there even when there is no uh, need to take place. And it's erected in, in a bus station. So basically next to the this pressure on four or six cars with like this bus is there. Um, this is a very poor area and, and people who come here are, are, are very poor. destroyed by, by tanks, basically, on uh, last February. Uh, when I visited um, this square, which is uh, held by one of the youth groups, uh, there was no uh, meeting going on there. People who came there. But I met uh, uh, people who uh, are the sort of organizing committee of that, uh, that square, uh, these people here. Yeah. He is one of the leaders. But, uh, <coughs> so the young, young women were 
this is the grandmother of, of that boy who was killed. Uh, his grandmother and her mother came to the demonstration that, that day. And, and this um, grandmother was asking me that, uh, where, where is the United Nations? And where are our human rights? Because uh, nobody seems to uh, care about uh, what is happening here. It's all about this uh, transition and dialogue in Sana and, and nothing about this people. So the next uh, um, day of the civil disobedience, uh, uh, some grown up people uh, came to the streets to protect the boys, and, and you can see that they are also women. This is the main street where the, the army had entered the army um, exactly here. And, and they are protecting the boys here. So the, to conclude, um, these are the people who are uh, demanding uh, their independence back. And uh, uh, there must be uh, very poor people. Uh, they want to uh, have a sort of uh, uh, state which, which is fair to all sections of, of society and which is transparent and, and doesn't investigate uh, uh, natural resources. Uh, they are com comparing themselves to the Palestinian Intifada, which is this one, and this is the uprising in one of the 